Welcome to our 2024 Newgate Virtual Stallion Parade. We're super excited about the upcoming season. Of course, this is our strongest, biggest, and best roster ever. Thanks to the support of readers, we covered the most mares through our barn in 2023. And with the exciting lineup of horses we have this year, we're set to do the same. From our young gun proven horses, our second, third, and fourth season horses who are so beautifully positioned to make their market start in the future years, and three high profile first crop stallions led out today by Osmosis. Excited, thankful to have Osmosis joining the Newgate stud roster, and today joined by his trainer, Bjorn Baker, and Newgate Farms' Henry Field to discuss his prospects moving forward. Everyone's using the e-trackers now, so we get the speed and the heart data, and what we see from him is, uh, I haven't got a horse that recovers anywhere like him. So he's got speed, he's got the recovery, he's got the ticker, um, and he's a very good looking horse. I can't wait to see him after a, a season or two at study. He's really gonna develop into a lovely horse. He's elegant, he's got a heap of quality, and he's probably not unlike Zoo Star himself. If you can get the, the big banger son of Zoo Star, the, the stud that gets that son of Zoo Star is a, in a hugely advantageous position. Osmosis stays down near the inside. He can't run it. And Osmosis eased down one by two and a half. I went to Randwick with him and I, I thought he was uh, the biggest certainty I've ever had at Randwick, ever. In other words, can't touch me. No, it's like I got the ball and it's probably rough. And you won't see me when I'm coming through. You can't stop me, I'm running through. Osmosis starting to wedge clear late. And Osmosis goes on to win it by a length and a quarter to World Tribute. We're ready, off in the Heritage Stakes. They can never reach me where I'm at, I'm in a rocky carpet. In other words, you can't touch me. No. It's like I got the ball in this rugby. And you won't see me when I'm coming through. You can't stop me, I'm running through. Osmosis lifting, kicking. Osmosis goes on to win the Heritage. The Colt remains unbeaten. And then in the cool more, he was just able to take it up and then take luck, luck out of the equation. And there was a, a pretty smooth watch. Osmosis at the clock tower. The leader, Osmosis, with 50 metres to go. Osmosis is clear and will take it out by a length and a quarter. I mean, it's a great stadium making race. It takes the best three year old sprinting colt in the country to win it. So it's a bloody hard race to win. He won it. Zustar won it his sire. His uh, grandson, sire Northern Media, his great grandson, in Costa de Lago. So four generations of the one line winning the same race is quite amazing. All of which were very, very good stallions before him. So, I mean, like all you can do in life and this business is learn from history and if history was to, was to repeat, uh, you'd have to be as confident about osmosis going to start as any horse you could retire. Very lucky at Newgate to have our racing team militarise a three-time Group 1 winning son of Dun Deal, of course, out of a Dubawi mare. Joined by Henry Field here from Newgate Farm, joined by his trainer, uh, Chris Waller. Guys, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Racing to the lead now, militarised and militarised draws clear to beat Queen of Dragons. Militarised is a new age horse. We want runners and everything. That's Australia. Um, He'll give you that horse. He is that horse. The great D. Wayne Lucas, and he, he, Hall of Fame trainer, probably the, the Chris Waller of North America, and he said, the three most important ingredients in a stallion are speed, speed, and speed. That natural speed is such an important part of the equation. But Militarise is on, firing right up here on the English side, draws away for an emphatic victory. The reason he won a size in the champagne, it was timing more so than distances. He'll, he'll be wherever you need him to be, when you need him to be there. Militarise is heading top gear, and Militarise blows them away in the Champagne Stakes. What 
militarised did was a bonus winning two group ones as a two year old, the size and the champagne. Mm. Um, but it set them up properly for another stallion making race in the in the Golden Rose. Uh, to come from a near unwinnable position, the acceleration that he showed to, to, to beat the best three year old Colts was quite awesome. End cap, cylinder, militarised late! Oh, barnstorming finished by Militarise. One of the keys to good stallions, I strongly believe, is they've got to be tough. He's a horse that dances every dance, always turns up, and uh, I think that will hold him in great stead. Yeah, you're 100% right. He's never had a day soreness, um, and that's, that's a true testament of a good sound horse. Like a dawn, making moves in the dark. Cause I learned how to swim in the pool full of sharks. Now they coaches, cause they can't read all his motions. How the kid never switched codes, but he cold switch focus. Staring down your team with a frozen ice cold look that can end the summer solstice. He's a lovely horse, had a good temperament about him, quite athletic, good body, a little bit light in condition when he first came in, but this time he came in, he kept getting better and bigger. Great mover, always had a low, big, strong action, and uh, yeah, right from early days we knew that he's, he's an above average cult, and um, yeah, no, we're super happy with him early. I'm the king, king. King's Gambit ambling up on the outside. Shin hasn't moved yet, a gap heuristic. She's all shenanigans, 200 to go. King's Gambit about to let down. He hasn't flinched on it. Untouched and uh, it raided through the roof. His first win was just done. And he went to slip a favour off that one run. I ain't got no time for appeasement. Why would I respond to a pawn? I'm the kingpin. And King's Gambit races to the lead. Oh, this is going to be a soft victory. Hardly touched. King's Gambit to the line, bolts in. Splendid isolation. I'm the kingpin. King's Gambit heading towards the slipper. Everything going perfect. The race didn't work out quite how we wanted to. It never does when you want it to work out that way. His last 600, 400 was exceptional. Right down the outside with a big run late, King's Gambit. Probably one that got away. He never stopped trying the whole way down the running. Leading up the Roman Consul like he was slow flying. King's Gambit up the fence from Mexico. Then came Osmosis, but it's checkmate. King's Gambit home today. Showed. It's how good he was. He showed the quality that we always seen in him. He proves it that day. They've run 19.16 and they've sprinted in 33.33. Well, that breaks Sportsworks' class record, which is held since 1993. Gee whiz. Ability-wise, he had it all. He had every bit as good as every, any court we've had. You've got to say, he's got to be a great chance to start. And he's got the confirmation, he's got a great pedigree, that every indicator is there for him to make it, make a real race for a stallion. The incredibly talented sprinter Myla Artorias has completed his first season at Newgate covering uh, just under 150 mares, got great support from terrific breeders with unbelievable fertility. And uh, today, as he rolls, or as we lead into his second season at Stud, we're uh, really pleased to be joined by his trainers, Anthony and Sam Friedman. He's a very special horse, to, particularly to Sam and I, because um, it's very rare that you buy yearling at races at the highest level and then becomes a stallion. It's very hard to do. Horse like him, he's a rarity in this day and age that campaigned at group one level as a two-year-old, as a three-year-old, and as a four-year-old. The other thing too for us, his temperament was amazing. Mm. You can't travel those those cults if they've got the bad temper. I think he was very versatile, um, and I love turn of foot in stadiums. They have to have it in this country, and he had it. You only really recognise his form in hindsight, you know, when Imperatriz comes out and wins eight group ones in a row, whatever it is, you know, he beats her at weight for age and the three-year-old beats her this year with no weight on his back but it's yeah that day he beat her fair and square he didn't let us down he's got a huge pedigree he's furnishing the most beautiful horse to get an elite horse like him they're the ones that make a lead stay and he has received 146 really nice mares first season got a great libido great yeah. shareholder support yeah. shareholder support his fertility is like he is the best in the shed it doesn't surprise me that he was well supported and um I'm, i'll be very keen to you know, buy a couple of them first season, for sure. Very much looking forward to his first foals uh, this spring. 
Anthony, Sam, thanks so much for your time, mate. Cheers, Chad. Appreciate it, guys. In the Congo enters his second season at start at Newgate in 2024. Following on from being the most popular first season sire in Australia last year, 169 mares covered, one in four of those stakes performers themselves, one in five were two-year-old winners themselves, so he's a, a young horse, extremely well set up through his first season. Delighted today to be joined by his co-trainer, Adrian Bott, the man that raised in the Congo, Mr. John Kelly, from New Haven Park, and Henry Field, of course, from, from Newgate Farm. First memory of in the Congo, the first time you sort of stood up and took notice of him in the farm. He was a magnificent foal from the first time you saw him. He, he was just all in the right proportions and he remained that his whole life. He never changed. I think that's probably the thing that I remember most about him. Yeah, he's a spectacular, spectacular horse. Uh, just, as John said, he's just almost perfectly proportioned with extraordinary amount of muscle for a muscle definition. A beautiful horse and as you say, he was very, very well received by the breeders last year. You know, I think he's a, the perfect horse. I think he's going to be an easy stay and a mate too because he's lovely and correct and he's the right size. I, I think it's not going to be that difficult for us, really. I suppose, Ray, I know from your point of view, especially with the way you train and like your horses to run come sale time, yeah, he's a horse that you're naturally going to sort of... Oh, he'd be very high on the radar for us to support. Just absolute bomb proof all the way through. Just had a real great appetite for work. He was always very contained with that speed. I think that's so important as well. In the Congo in front, Animo trying to go toe for toe. In the Congo kicks, and in the Congo won the golden rose from Animo. He's a horse that was hard, tough, retired, sound as a bell, clean-winded. I could see trainers loving them. They'll get their hands on a horse that they can get up and going early. Um, they train on for you. The versatility between the distance ranges, as you said, sound horses. So you're going to get a good career out of it. Like, you know, what more do you want from, from your ace horses, you know? Dead right. Mm -hmm. Well said. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you very much for your time and uh, looking forward to this journey with in the Congo. It's done with you all. Thank you. State of Rest returns to Australia for 2024. And in anticipation of his arrival, we've gathered together a couple of the people that knew him best. Trainer, Joseph O'Brien, and uh, probably State of Rest's biggest fan, Kevin Blake. Joseph, what, what do you think have been the key ingredients in, in what you've seen that, have, that, that do make the good stallions as good as they are? In particularly with regard to State of Rest, um, and his sire, Star Spangled Banner. The thing that sticks out with them is, is their attitude. State of Rest was a particularly tough horse. He had an iron constitution, an iron mentality, and and really every challenge that we put at the horse, uh, he, he took in his stride. We've been lucky enough to see his foals start hitting the ground. I know Joseph has has, um, has a few foals in his place, and I have a few foals in my place, and we've seen a few others around some other top farms here. Um, you know, I think he, he's stamping them really, really well. And um, yeah, it looks like he's going to have every chance um, in both hemispheres to, to show us all what he can do and hopefully be um, a really important salient. We had two mares back in the fold to him, so um, we've supported him heavily with our mares. Um, uh, we hope to hope to have some more of his stock uh, um, on the ground for the next few weeks and uh, hopefully hopefully he, he can pass on his, his talent and his, his attitude, um, as I'm sure he will. Profiteer was a super fast two-year-old by Capitalist. Like Tassort, like Extreme Choice, a two-year-old that debuted with a Daniel O'Sullivan rating of 100 plus. He served over 240 mares through his first two seasons at stud and stands this year in 2024, his third season at $10,000 plus GST. Tiger of Malay is one of Extreme Choice's very best two-year-olds and of course a high-priced yearling himself. No surprise to see his first crop weanlings accepted in the market so well, where they made up to seven times his 2024 fee, which is $10,000 plus GST.
Wild Roller, stamped, bay, very much in his mold. Top class group one sprinter that dance every dance, two, three, and four. Golden Slipper winner and stay inside by extreme choice. His foals are spectacular. Take it to the bank. You won't see a, uh, a horse with better first foals. They're amazing. Well, I can tell you the good ones we have here are anyway. Our lone fourth crop sire is North Pacific, whose first yearlings debuted this season, sold very well, and he'll stand this year for $15,000 plus GST. Very talented horse, very good line of yearlings, been bought by many of the best stables. He was a horse that didn't win a group one, but he was phenomenal where he ran behind Farnan and the Silver Slipper, who the up and coming by five. He just got lived in a photo finish in the Golden Rose by Ole Kirk and then was retired prematurely. But he's a horse that had a load of talent, Lovely stock and a great bet for the season, sir. Brutal is a stallion on the up. His first crop, two rods this season have impressed, and as you'd expect given his profile, they'll be even better at three and beyond. There's a lot of smart money being played Brutal's way this season in 2024 at his advertised fee of $15,000 plus GST. Cosmic Force is doing a fantastic job with his first crop two rods this season. He's getting plenty of winners. They continue to sell very well in the ring. He leaves great types and he stands this season at $10,000 plus GST. Tassort is a leading first crop sire and of course headlined by his group one winner, Manal. Tassort was one of the first horses booked out on our roster in 2024 at his advertised fee of $35,000 plus GST. Capitalist. Great sire in Hong Kong, gets colts that can run, fillies that can run. He's mature, precocious. To me, he's very much filling and building like his sire written tycoon. And I think at a fee of 60,000, he is the most uh, well-priced proven stay in in Australia this season. A top 10 sire uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the premiership and one of the most commercial sires in this country. Russian Revolution, champion first season sire, champion second season sire. We know he's a very, very good stay in. We know what's in the pipeline. He's covered phenomenal books the last two seasons. He's a really good stay in. He's an outstanding stay in. He side group one winners in his first crop. He side host of top class two year olds. I mean, if you look at his first crop, he had Russian conquest, just lived in a Magic Mians. Peter Snowden's very good Philly revolutionary miss, just lived in a Blue Diamond. He's a top sire. And this is the year to use him for the smart breeders. Extreme Choice is statistically elite 
And as a breeder in 2024, there is not a stallion who has a better chance of breeding you a stakes winner, a group one winner, or a stallion prospect for stud. The market is aware of this. One in six of his yearlings sold in 2024 made $1 million or more. best crops are ahead of him and it's all upside at his 2024 fee of $250,000 plus GST. Thank you for taking the time to watch our 2024 Newgate Stallion virtual parade. Without the support of breeders, we would be nothing. We look forward to working with you all in 2024 to make it the most successful season yet.